Coffee Time with Officer Fox, guest starring Detective Walker. Do you like rocks? We had the opportunity in Gooding County to work a uh, uh, fairly prolific confidential informant for Gooding County who ended up working with, with U Niles, with DEA, and for the Gooding County Sheriff's Office. We're doing buys. The, the case took about a year to, to complete. And we're, we're sending the CI in, and he'd done, between DEA and the county, he'd done 17 or 18 different people to conduct a buys from. Um, we're about eight months into it. We're wrapping the case down. It's, well, I can't remember. The, the federal case was Operation Wildfire. And we're about eight months into the case, and we start going to grand jury on all the federal cases, and I'm writing up all the search warrants. Well, the CI was still in play. And to get the maintenance buys done, we were just so just so we could keep the CI in good graces with everybody and keep the ball rolling on the case, we were doing the maintenance buys, and we were just buying, you know, eight balls, quarter ounces, half ounces, and stuff like that. So we ended up, I get a hold of the CI and say, hey, make contact with this gal, see if we can see if we can buy some dope. And she said, yeah, not a problem. She calls me back about an hour later. She says, hey, we're good to go on this dope deal. Uh, there's a few problems with it. You know, we're going to have, we might have to front the money. We'd already bought from this gal before in the past. Um, and we already knew who her connect was. So, we, you know, we got enough people. We got enough manpower. So we're going to go ahead and do the dope deal and let the money walk. Because we wanted the secondary person that they were getting their dope from. Right? And we were going to follow the bad guy. So anyway, we're going to go ahead and front the money. And I've got a, I've got a team. Um, Alex is in there. Well, in this specific case, we had a newer prosecutor and his, what you call him, legal assistant. Uh, it was his, we won't call it legal assistant, we'll call it an investigator. So the, I let the prosecutor know, hey, we're coming down on these cases. We, I, we briefed him that, you know, DEA is going to grand jury. All my arrest warrants, search warrants are getting geared up, but we're doing maintenance buys. He goes, you know, I've never done on a dope deal before. I'd like to go. And uh, I don't give a shit if you go or not. I mean, jump on in. And so uh, one of one of my partners, Alex, he's got the prosecutor and I have the, the investigator for the prosecutor's office. So we wired the CI up and we send the source in and we're all split up and, and uh, CI walks into the house, makes contact with a male and a female and we hear him do a money count. All right, we're all good. And, and uh, the gal's really agitated and she's yelling at her boyfriend, you go get my dope right now. And she's screaming at him, right? And we're, we're a quarter block away. It's in a trailer house. And we see the guy walk out and, and uh, it's kind of funny because the guy had had a stroke in the past and his his mouth was all hunched over and he'd go running out of the house like he's hunched over and he's already had a stroke. But anyway, he gets in a truck and leave and Alex follows him to wherever he's going or I can't remember exactly how it went down on that end of the deal. But then the CI and the female half of that, the dope deal, start having a conversation. And the female says, hey, do you like rocks? And I'm just listening to this conversation on the wire. This is prior to us having the new upgraded video, all that other stuff on the body wires. And she says, I'm sure, I, I guess. Yeah, I like rocks. And she goes, look at this little rock right here. And the CI goes, well, yeah. And she goes, it looks like a coyote, doesn't it? And the CI goes, what the fuck, I guess. Yeah, what are you talking about, lady? She goes, yeah, it looks like a little coyote. And she goes, and it'll fit right here. And you don't, we don't get to see anything. We don't know what's going on, but we're questioning going, where the fuck did she put this rock? And we hear, clump, clump, clump. I got to take a piss. Clump, 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 clump. The CI goes running into the bathroom and he goes, Derek, get me the fuck out of here. She just stuck a rock in her ass. <laughs> and I, I'm just like, well, I didn't give the go bad word. So, and he did, the CI didn't have a, the CI didn't have a cell phone. And uh, so we're like, well, he didn't get the go bad. It doesn't sound like it's violent. So, and the dope hadn't got back yet. And I got money out. And so we're just like, I get on the, the horn and I'm letting everybody know that the bad lady stuck a rock in her ass. And 
the prosecutor's in with him, and I got the criminal investigator, and he goes, is this usually the way this shit happens? I said, no, this one's kind of unusual, but all right. So we get, we get the bad guy shows up. Alex finally shows up with the prosecutor, and the dope deal goes down. And the CI walks out of the house and cannot stop laughing. And so we're briefing this. We're briefing all this up. I get the CI sit down and I get the dope. We get a, a verbal account of what happened. The CI actually wrote a statement out on it. And I don't know, it was two weeks later, we're getting ready to go to prelim. And we had, and he's deceased now. His name was Swede Swenson. He was the public defender at the time. He goes, Derek, you know, I think we can beat you on this. I said, have you listened to the audio file yet, Swede? And he goes, no, I haven't. Why is that? You should probably go listen to the audio file. <laughs> and she ended up pleading right before prelim. So, but that was one of the experiences that uh lady stuck a rock in her ass during a control purchase was one of one of my favorite ones.